Do you wish to achieve big wins in your financial life? Well, you're on the right channel because in today's video, I'll share with you six reasons why you're broke and how you can fix them. So stay tuned. I'm Munif Ali, a self-made multimillionaire with multiple brick and mortar businesses that have sold billions of dollars in sales. I'm not selling you anything here. The purpose of this channel is to teach you what it takes to become successful through real life experiences that I have had. So if you like this type of content, so go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Wherever I look, the United States is always among the top 10 richest countries in the world. It ranks first based on the International Monetary Fund's data and ranks ninth in Forbes after considering the effects of the pandemic. But despite being among the richest countries in the world, 37 million people within our country still live in poverty. According to a 2022 HHS poverty guideline, which is the basis for who is financially eligible for certain federal programs, if you live in Alaska, you'd be considered poor if you have an annual income of $16,990 for a single person household. It is said that the average American family consists of about 3.13 people. So let's just use the basis of three persons in a household for simpler numbers. According to the same guideline, if you belong to a three person household in Alaska, you'll be considered poor if your annual household income is $28,790. And remember, Alaska ranks seventh as the state with the highest cost of living in the third quarter of 2021 with an average cost of living at $48,739 a year. So if your household income is only $28,790, that's definitely not enough. So let's find out what are some of the reasons why people can't get out of the poverty line. Reason number one, you don't earn enough money. As I've always mentioned in my previous videos, one of the most obvious reasons for being broke is not earning enough money. So let's go back to the example earlier. The cost of living in Alaska is $48,739. So if you belong to a poor house household earning $28,790 a year, it is difficult to save money in that situation. It's not practical considered that you can't afford your household's basic needs. The only thing you can do in that situation is to increase your income streams. So how do you do that? The easiest way to eliminate generational poverty is to increase your marketable skills. Figure out what skills are being valued in your particular market and area, the kind of skills that are currently in demand, and the skills that you can learn even without going to college. Considering that you are currently belonging to a poor household, it is not wise to go further into debt just for education. Now I might get some flack for that. There is a lot of opportunities even with just a high school diploma. So is it more practical to learn a skill first and get into the job market and be extremely good at your job? You get to decide that. When you start earning a decent amount of money, then you can pursue a college education since it is still the best way to increase your marketability overall. In my case, I grew up in a low income household and seeing my mom work so hard motivated me to do something to get us out of that situation. There was a time when my mom couldn't afford to send me to daycare. So I spent most of my hours in a neighborhood library, reading books and absorbing as much knowledge as I possibly could get my hands on. And that has made a whole lot of difference to where I am today. My point is that absorbing knowledge and applying it to your life is one way to increase your marketability. I'm not saying that going to college is not helpful. What I'm trying to say is that if you can't afford it, there are many ways to increase your marketability. One of them is reading books, not just a few books, but a mountain of them. If you can afford to go to college, make sure you choose a degree with a high rate of return or a return on your investment so that you can pay off that student loan even faster. You can also try going into sales, have some side hustles or start a business. In my case, I went into real estate where a majority of my income still comes from. There are many ways that you can increase your income and make more money. Just find out what works for you and be really good at it by spending a lot of time in it. Reason number two, you don't save enough. I just told you earlier in this video that if your income is below the average cost of living is not practical to save up. Still, this video is not only for the people who are in the poverty line, but also for those earning hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, but are still considered broke. According to Credit Loan Survey, Americans consider themselves broke if they only have $878 in their bank account or lower. This may seem far from being poor, but if you look at the average national rent of $1,400, that tiny nest egg can rapidly vanish into thin air. You might even have heard of some big time celebrities and successful athletes and highly paid professionals retiring without a penny to their name. This is because even if you earn hundreds of thousands or even millions a year, they also spent like mad men and women thinking that money that they were earning would never
never end. That's why being broke is not just about not earning enough money, but also not saving enough money. Let's go back to my previous example. Let's say you're a doctor in Alaska, your average income would be $198,000 a year. So if the average cost of living in Alaska is $48,739, let's make it $48,000. Then you will be left with $150,000. It is recommended to have 20 to 30% of after tax savings. So at 20% of $150,000, that would be $30,000 a year, which would be $2,500 a month. So to save you from too many headaches, you can automatically put them into a different bucket of investments like an investment bucket, a savings bucket, an emergency fund bucket, a retirement bucket, travel bucket, car buckets, home buckets, just about anything you want to save up for. Reason number three, you drive an excessively expensive vehicle. Driving expensive cars is the quickest way to deplete your wealth, is the number one wealth killer. Most people can't afford to buy a car in cash and will turn to an auto loan most of the time. And did you know that generally cars depreciate approximately 40% after five years? So if your average price for a non-luxury car is $44,431 and generally a car depreciates around 40%, if you have good credit of let's say 660 to 780 on your credit score, you will get an interest rate of about 4.21%. And after five years, you would have paid a total interest of $4,917 with a total payment of $49,348.91. At this point, you've already lost $20 $2,348.91. You sell your car, just imagine how much you would have earned if you invested that money instead. But if you really need to buy a car because of work, for instance, you work in sales and having a car would make a good impression, what you can do is apply the 20 Four ten rule. If you're choosing the first ever new car, consider the asking price of the car. Is the price good enough for you to realistically save up to 20% for a down payment? If yes, then include that car in your list of potential buys. Next, choose a four-year auto loan. This is because of the interest payment. Remember, the longer the term you choose, the more money you lose to interest. Then lastly, it should only take up to 10% of your monthly income. If you follow these guidelines, you can safely get a new car without putting too much of a financial burden on yourself. Number four, you purchase an excessive expensive home. Did you know that according to Consumer Affairs report, 69% of home owners feel like they are house poor? 73% also admitted that meeting household expenses are becoming more and more difficult. Housing and housing related costs are also the biggest among American expenditures and the main culprit for making many people remain broke for a lifetime. In fact, on average, it accounts for 34.9% of American spending. But if you still want to buy a home, here's some tips. Ideally, keeping it 30% or below your monthly income would be great. More than that, and you risk becoming home poor. Choose a 15-year mortgage loan for the same reason I mentioned earlier with a car loan. This is due to the interest that you will incur. And the longer the term of the loan, the more expensive it becomes. Lastly, take your time. Save up 20% of a down payment. This is because when you pay less than 20%, you will be required to pay PMI or private mortgage insurance. This cost can easily be prevented by saving up to 20% down. Having a nice home for you and your family is great, but don't rush into it. Follow the criteria that I just mentioned. Take it from me. Majority of my wealth is built on real estate. Reason number five, you're way too comfortable with your life. It is human nature to look at patterns and fear change. After all, we're all creatures of habit. When you do things routinely, you feel in control and at ease. That is why we are very resistant to change. But little do most of us know that habits or being comfortable or complacent dulls our senses and numbs our reasoning. So when you're very comfortable with your situation, it is a challenge to do something different, like starting a side hustle or starting a business or maybe even changing careers that would pay more. We've already been too comfortable with our situations, so we're afraid to try a new thing. To break this habit, figure out what are the things that you're doing that take a lot of your time. For instance, playing video games more than three to four hours a day or maybe watching a whole football game every night or going a whole week watching the basketball series. Then replace them with some more productive activities that will contribute to your income streams, such as starting a blog or a YouTube channel or getting some other side hustle. So think outside the box and figure out what works for you. I know of plenty of men and women that complain about not earning enough, yet they watch movie after movie, sport after sport, and they don't utilize their time wisely. Reason number six is keeping up with the Joneses or the fear of missing out. Did you know that according to a survey, 69% of millennials experience FOMO? This is more prevalent with millennials age 18 to 30. And according to some surveys, 48% of millennials even admitted to spending on something they don't need to keep up with their friends. The main 
culprit in this is because of social media. In fact, an astonishing 40% said they would spend on something at least once a year, only to post it on social media. Keeping up with the Joneses with the fear of missing out won't do any good for you. What you are doing is that you are tailoring your success with that of others, and you're letting them influence your financial decisions. It would be fine to the extent of clothing and food choices, but what if it extended to investments and investing decisions? For instance, you've heard your friends or colleagues talking about a certain stock or a fund or Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, and all of your friends are already investing in it. So you went ahead and invested in it as well, fearing missing out without really checking the fundamentals, only to lose the money that you invested because the market crashed or the FTX exchange crashed or whatever happened. The easiest solution to fix this mentality is to focus on things that you generally do that makes you happy, not on what makes other people happy, and to keep up with friends that won't judge you regardless of the kind of car you drive. Usually when someone has a fear of missing out is accompanied by the anxiety that their friends will judge them or that they will lose some friends if they don't keep up with them or they will be treated as an outsider or differently. But you see, if friends judge you based on your clothes or the car you drive or the purse you carry or, or the shoes you have, you can't really truly call them true friends. Find people that will add quality and depth to your life. People will accept you for who you are rather than what kind of lifestyle you lead or show. Compliment your lifestyle rather than putting pressure on yourself to outclass it. Thank you for staying with me to the end of this video. But before I go, I wanna ask you guys, what among the reasons I've mentioned are you the most guilty of? Please let me know in the comment section below. That's all for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed this and found it valuable. If you do, please give this video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. If you don't know how to build your wealth from the ground up, then check out this next video, Build Your Wealth From Scratch, Broke to Millionaire Step by Step.